Okay. So during this session, we're going to hear about international collaborations going from the large-scale initiatives collaborating with each other all the way down to interested parties collaborating it, uh, together. So our first speaker is going to be um, Linda Lanyon from INCF, the executive director, and she's going to speak about the International Brain Initiative. Okay, thanks, Matthew. So, as Matthew says, I'm going to talk about the International Brain Initiative, IBI. Uh, this is an initiative spearheaded by Kavli Foundation to uh, bring together the world's large-scale brain projects. Um, so I'd just like to mention that uh, in the audience we've got Agnes McMahon somewhere, I don't know, Ag up there. Uh, Agnes is going to soon start work with Kavli to uh, organize all of the IBI meetings. So following this presentation, of course, I'd love to hear feedback that you have uh, that I can feed back to IBI, but also I'm sure Agnes would be uh, very interested to hear your thoughts and take them with her as she starts her, her new job at Carvely next week. Okay, so uh, as we know, over the last five years or so, there's been some major investments in brain initiatives around the world with many countries launching large-scale national projects. Um, so in 2013, the US Brain Initiative was launched and the Human Brain Project in Europe. After that, Japan launched its Brain Minds project focused on the marmoset. Korea has launched an initiative. Uh, the Australian Brain Alliance is currently working to, to lobby to launch uh, their Australian Brain project. China Brain project is sort of poised, uh, about to be launched. Um, and within Canada, we've heard, of course, a lot from Alan this morning about the various efforts that are going on here, which are uh, really amazing, and being brought together under a banner of the Canadian Brain Research Strategy. So, of course, there's a need for coordination between these large projects to make sure that we're really maximizing impact and efficiency globally and reducing potential redundancies, and that we're really all kind of working together towards common global standards rather than each nation developing its own standards and doing its, its own thing. So, of course, there's many different coordination actions in this space, and INCF has, has led uh, several of these for, for many years, and we heard a lot of other ones coming from Canada from uh, Alan's talk this morning. And I'm going to talk now about the, the IBI, and uh, this is a fairly new initiative, but follows some meetings that Carvely held throughout 2016. And then right at the end of last year, 2017, um, they had a meeting in Australia called the Brains at the Dome. And some of the, the large-scale initiatives met there and formed this declaration of intent to form an international brain initiative. So they said that the, the global brain initiatives recognize that they're engaged in an effort so large and complex that even with the unprecedented efforts and resources from public and private sectors, no single initiative will be able to tackle the challenge to measure, map, image, model, simulate, understand, imitate, diagnose, and heal the brain. So the IBI was, was formed then at the end of 2017. INCF uh, has been involved since the, the start of this year, and uh, we've attended the, the, the two in-person meetings that have happened so far, the first in Korea in May, and the second in Geneva, hosted at the Human Brain Project in July. Um, so the, the group that, that meets is formed of representatives from each of the, the nation's projects and uh, INCF and Libro. And so far the meetings we focused around forming what is the, the IBI vision and its aims specifically. And we're now turning attention to forming a series of working groups. So already formed uh, was a group looking at a global inventory of brain projects, and that's being led by Melina Hale and Patrick Hoff in the US. That's a project funded by NSF. And a neuroethics team have, have been quite active already, organizing a couple of world conferences, and that's led by Karen Rommelfanger from the US and Ginny Jong from South Korea. And then at the Geneva meeting, we began to talk about the formation of other working groups in these areas shown. Uh, and INCF is, is going to have representation and, and be active in, in each of these. I'm going to talk more specifically about the data sharing and standards and education and training working groups in a moment. 
So the IBI has been uh, connecting with the scientific community and, and you know, asking for views in a number of different meetings uh, up to now, and this is all led by Carvely. Uh, most recently at the FENS meeting in Berlin, there was a, a social networking session where uh, various questions were posed to scientists about sort of what are your barriers to data sharing and, and so on. And then there will be another meeting arranged at, at SFN to launch the IBI website and do some more outreach. So now, um, that was the standard IBI piece with, with slides, thanks to, to Carvely. I'm going to turn now more specifically to INCF's involvement in IBI and, and uh, what we can do as part of this initiative. So we're uh, receiving some funding from Carvely to participate in the Global Inventory Project. And as I mentioned, we're planning to participate in the working groups. And I think we'll have um, some co-leadership in the, the data sharing and standards working group. We've also, over the last year, uh, organized some INCF events that happen to uh, advance IBI uh, aims, so it could be considered as, as, you know, helping towards the IBI initiative. The first of these was here in, in McGill, uh, organized by JB Pauline for the uh, INCF Canada node in, in March, and that was making open neuroscience infrastructures interoperable. Uh, so that was a very successful meeting focused, as you can tell, from the, the practicalities of making these things interoperable, and there's plans to hold another one early in uh, next year. Uh, and then in April, uh, at the INCF Secretariat in Stockholm, we, we held a, a brain summit, um, which was aimed again at bringing together these large-scale initiatives, very focused on uh, the practical issues around aligning these large-scale projects from around the world, with a specific focus in this meeting on, on clinical data, uh, particularly traumatic brain injury. So a number of concrete outcomes came from that meeting, including uh, the group progressed work on, a, on an inventory that, of course, we're, we're sort of syncing with the, the main IBI inventory project, and other recommendations for forming working groups, uh, hosting workshops, and, and writing a, a, work, a white paper. Um, so then at, at these IBI meetings, bringing the INCF perspective to this, what I've been trying to sort of uh, focus on there is, of course, the INCF perspective being around the practicalities of how do we, how do we link these, these projects, so the sort of the systems and the data standards aspects. So I've been talking about the, the need to, to have interoperability and the ability to search across data sets and really creating some sort of underlying framework to enable this, this sharing and interoperability through the use and the development and use of common standards for data and metadata and systems interoperability, APIs and so on. And of course the training and education that goes alongside all of that with training in neuroinformatics being vitally important. So very glad to hear everybody here's feedback on you know what we should be lobbying for in the I IBI coming from the INCF perspective um, and whether this is the, the, the sort of thing that, that you think is important. Um, so then when it comes to the, the working group on data sharing and standards, uh, it, it, as I said, it looks likely that INCF will be co-leading this with the Japan Brain Minds project. Um, so far at the meeting in Geneva where we first presented ideas on this, we've really been uh, just trying to make sure that the people in IBI are really aware of all of the existing initiatives that are, are going on within the community, making sure there's no reinventing of wheels, that we're really you know, using what's out there. Um, so again, really seeking feedback from you all on what should be the scope and how do we form this working group as we go forward. It's really early stages right now. No specific plans has, have been made for the composition of the working group, so this is the time to feedback. But possible focus areas might be around technological, financial, motivational, legal, and ethical. So I think, you know, from the, I, um, the INCF perspective, obviously we've worked very much around the technological and the standards, um, and we often hit upon problems of, you know, needing to have more incentives from funders and publishers and academic institutions to incentivize researchers to really share. Um, so I think this may be something where IBI can help because they do have the uh, sort of higher level political uh, power and, and sway 
to be able to you know, really help us lobby for that. So that might be an area where we can utilize being part of IBI. And of course, INCF has a lot of expertise in this area to really bring to bear on this with 12 years of experience of managing working groups, developing standards for data sharing, and of course, all of the standards that have come from the community here, and the fact that from this year, INCF is endorsing standards um, so that badge of endorsement may be a really useful thing for, for IBI. And of course a number of products like the Knowledge Space Community Encyclopedia for Neuroscience are, are relevant here. Um, I haven't got time to go in detail through this, but I'd be glad to hear your thoughts on how can, you know, what can IBI do to help overcome barriers to data sharing. And there may be some of the categories here that, that something can be done. I think particularly, as I say, around lobbying the stakeholders and raising awareness. That may be something they can really help us with. Then the Working Group on Education and Training uh, is likely to be led by EBRO in conjunction with the Career Brain Initiative. I've uh, spoken already to, with Pierre Magistretti at, at EBRO about the fact that in INCF we have a training and education committee and we're really keen to collaborate here and we've sort of made a in principle agreement that we'll have cross representation between the working group and our committee. So um, again, glad to hear particularly from members of the INCF tech, you know, how, how we should be taking forward that discussion with them. Uh, we have a lot of expertise of, and, and resources to bring to bear here, of course, the, not only the Training and Education Committee with all of the, the partners involved in that, but also the INCF Training Space, which is an online hub for training and education materials. Um, so, as I said, really uh, very interested to hear your feedback on, you know, where, what we should be uh, taking back to, to Carvely and the other members of the IBI and, you know, what where should the, the, the direction of these working groups on data sharing and standards and training and education or, or the other topics. So please feel free to feedback to me, Helena or Matthew or Agnes. Thanks.